Hello and welcome back to part 13 of Brentford Moneyball approach with me LIGO and today we've got the summer transfer window recap and as you can see it's been a busy summer window for championship clubs 127 deals done a couple of major transfers there big money moves uh, mainly going out but one transfer within the championship 27 million euros for Masengo uh, swapped hands and we'll be having a look at what we've been doing so let's dive straight into that and as you can see it's not been the busiest of windows for ourselves uh, only 18 and, a, 18 and a quarter million moving hands uh, total of 8 million or 8.25 million spent 10 million coming in and it was a bit of a tricky one there wasn't uh, much interest in the players that we wanted to get rid of a lot of interesting players that we didn't want to get rid of and then struggled to bring in the players that I was intending to bring in so as you can see we've had a lot of loan players go out uh, Presley, Sorensen, De Silva, uh, Drew Yearwood uh, I wouldn't say a big player from last year but a bit part player um, Balcom has gone out on loan mainly youngsters and then a few players um, that were part of uh, the under 23s last year also go back out on loan and then a few more first team players Ratchich, uh, Christian 2 who we actually brought in in the summer I spent 2 million euros confirming his deal uh, wasn't wasn't the best player at the club last year but I thought 2 million euros can't really turn that down so we brought him in he's gone out on loan to Charlton um, but the players we did manage to get rid of, Reese Cole, uh, under 23 player, not really um, showing any potential. Uh, the stats not leaning in his favour, so we sent him off for 150,000. Miliano Marcondes uh, struggled to get rid of him, ended up going to QPR. Well, I wanted to get rid of him for 10 million euros, he agreed to that but there was just no clubs throwing that kind of money around he had a year left on his contract so 3.2 initial cost uh, possibly rising to 4.1 million euros I thought better take the money rather than maybe him playing 5-6 games he did play 21 in all competitions last year but see most of them substitute appearances so took the money let him go and then another big outgoing player Henrik Dalsgaard, I mentioned in the last episode, he'd be one that I'd be happy to get rid of. Again, looking for 10 million euros, never got that incoming. He agreed to go to 7.5 million, um, still nobody would pay that, so eventually in the end, Nice offered 5 million euros, so he went out on uh, permanent transfer. And then the other, the other, I wouldn't say major transfer, but two big transfers. Marcus Force going out on loan to get some game time. And hello, Durfee Soglu. He's a player that I was looking to get as part of the first team squad. But Blackburn came in with a very good offer, looking to make him a regular starter. And also offering 1.7 million over the term of the loan. So I thought, rather than him being a bit part player, we'll take the money, let him get regular game time at Blackburn, and hopefully he'll be a big player next year. But the player's in. Tom Smith, under 23 goalkeeper, released by Arsenal, uh, didn't have any real stats to go with other than his attributes, so I thought bring him in, a uh, player that's been rejected by a Premiership club, 500 euros a week, it's no harm, give him a try, if it works out, it works out, if it doesn't, it doesn't, no big loss. Hopefully the answer to our striking problems for a year. We've brought in Rian Brewster on loan. No fee, just to pay his €7,000 uh, a week wage. Scored 9 and assisted 5 for Swansea last year. Not great returns. But with that, he did have a high pass percentage. 1.5 dribbles per game. And he was hitting 60% of his shots on target. So I'm thinking if you can do that again, hopefully he can turn into more goals. Uh, the Liverpool stats here you can see showing us Brentford, but it's actually for Liverpool. 
pre-season, he had uh, three appearances, three goals, pass percentage nearer to 90, dribbles still one, and he's hitting still 50% of his shots on target per game. So we've gambled on him a little bit. The stats were showing in his favour. So we've brought him in as a striker to lead the line. Christian too, as I mentioned, player that uh, was on loan with us. Managed to get him for two million. Thought he had a decent season. Two million was very much justified. With Dalsgaard going out, we've brought in James Bree as his replacement. 300,000 euros from Aston Villa. As you can see, he was down on uh, loan at Luton last year. Had a had a very good se or not a very good season. He had a good season by um, his standards. Thirty six appearances, four assists from right back, uh, four point seven tackles a game with a reasonable pass percentage, seventy seven percent. Hopefully, we can improve on that. Uh, one dribble per game, sixty percent of his shots on target. So it's um, it's a positive one and looking for a player that's there for the future. Um, I think at 300,000 that's a bit of a steal. Stephen Walker, a player that we've brought in hoping to learn out. Uh, Middlesbrough were looking at getting rid of him for a quarter of a million. A um, little bit of a gamble. Stats on crew at loan last year were not fantastic. Uh, but this is a player that's more interested in playing as a false nine as opposed to an out and out striker. So a quarter of a million, a bit of a gamble, regular player. Scored four goals, assisted eight. Uh, very low pass completion, which is a bit of a worry. But then he's got an average over all competitions of 2.69 dribbles per game. He's hitting about half of his shots on target. So I thought with that, we'll give him a chance. We'll let him go out on loan and reassess him after that. And then the other major signing, and actually our club record signing now, was Matt Miyazaga. And this is a player that we brought in from Chelsea for just short of €6 million. Euros. Uh, we never got rid of a centre-back, so we weren't actively looking for one. But um, a lot of the players, once we sold Dalsgaard, were looking for us to strengthen um, the first team squad and with him being able to play centre back and also um, as a half back although not not the most accomplished at half back I thought this was a, a astute signing played 38 times for Reading last year uh, 1.3 tackles per game high pass percentage of completion averaging a 7.03 and then over the summer, you can see he played five international games, made 3.8 tackles per game with a high pass percentage, averaging a 7.26. Um, so I thought, with Janssen looking to, or for us looking to move Janssen on in the next year or so, um, he's a player that can come in, be part of the squad for a year before we move Janssen out. And then if we just look at uh, the latest transfers which didn't happen before the deadline day. Um, Rico Henry handed in a transfer request. There was interest from West Brom for him. So he was transfer listed. He's valued at 9.25 million. I wanted 15. I thought that was very reasonable. Nobody came close to offering for that so he's still part of the squad. There was a late offer from Norwich for Christian Norgard, 8 million. Absolutely no way that they're going to get him for 8 million so it's not even close to his value so it was rejected he never mentioned anything about it and then there was an offer for Saeed Ben Rama from Norwich as well and I think initially they offered about 18 maybe less than that million I said give me 20 up front 30 overall and I'm happy with that and as you can see it was uh, cancelled because Norwich said that's absolutely fine. Unfortunately, they're having a change of ownership, so there was an embargo put on the transfer, and the transfer was cancelled, which I suppose fortunately for us, yes, we don't get the 30 million, but we keep our top scorer for another year. So as a result, the squad not now looks like this. We've got two keepers, Gunnison and Raya. 
Pinnock, Yonvier, Janssen and Miyazaga as four centre-backs. Bree, Rose, Thompson and Henry are our full-backs. Uh, we've got strength in midfield with De Silva, Jensen, Norgard, Baptiste. Miyazaga, as I mentioned, can come play at the half-back. We've got young player Paris Magoma, also going to get a lot more opportunities this year. And then going forward, we've, uh, we've got a plethora of options. We've got Jan Zamburek, a player that's come back to us from being on loan last year. As you can see, he had a very good under-21s championships, averaging a 7.63. Got two goals, two assists, four dribbles per game. Should be an exciting player. Uh, Joel Valencia has come back in from Derby. He went out on loan, as did Tarek Fosu. So they're now available again. Sergio Canos back from injury. And then three strikers, obviously, with Watkins being able to play out wide as well. So we've got Botheim, Brewster and Watkins, which I think gives us strength in depth going into this season. So if we have a quick look at the schedule, we have Forest and Norwich up first for the first games of the season. And they'll be in tomorrow's episode. And Plymouth in the first round of the EFL Cup. So that should be an interesting one. Plenty of opportunities for rotation there. But if you've liked this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up down below, subscribe to the channel, and thank you very much for watching.